let's take a look at old school values for what I would call the modern man. We live in this world that's mostly digital, super, super fast paced. Everything is going so quick. Like, and we're generally scared to say anything or approach people, particularly of the opposite sex. Um, it's not easy. So I think we can look back to sort of this essence of old school values that we kind of lose in the hustle and bustle. Welcome to the Warrior Mindset Podcast. We are your guide as you make your way through life, getting better 1% every day. We believe that life is lived and true victory won through adversity. Nothing easy is ever worth it. We believe in the warrior ethos and support those that choose to walk that path. They're timeless. They've shaped our fathers, our generation. And so I'd like to just take a deep dive into some of that and see where we get. Things like hard work, integrity, respect, they were not just buzzwords for men's like our fathers and those before him. They were guiding principles. Think about that. Hard work, integrity, respect for each other. Those were the bedrock of how men interacted with each other. Now, I'm going to use the term men a lot. This is for anyone. But in particular, I'm addressing men. I want to first look at some people that I look to and then some differences in the world. Okay. I recently came across this person, uh, Luke Nichols, and he runs a YouTube channel. He has almost 7 million subscribers. Think about that. This is a man on his own with almost 7 million subscribers. Um, the description, me and my boys, Tommy, Nate, and Jacob are the outdoor boys. We love all things outdoors. Family projects, adventures, travel, foraging, camping, campfire cooking, fossil hunting, blah, 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 blah. blah. And it goes down the list. But I, the point is that he's doing these things with his family. He's showing us how to survive a lot in the Alaskan wilderness, among other places around the world. He's adventurous. He also, if you watch his videos, he takes care of his family. He has a clean sense of humor. He's almost everything, in the videos at least, he's almost everything that you would want in a father. Um, there's so many outdoor, out old school uh, values that this man is teaching us just by living and recording that it's hard to even say. Uh, I just I would encourage you to go out and watch a bunch of his videos. I've just fallen in love with this man and his family and what he does. And we could all learn a lot by just emulating him. Now, that is one, I don't really want to say it's one side of the spectrum because he's, he's, I mean, if you delve into his history, he is a lawyer. He's a criminal defense attorney turned outdoorsman. He's a father of three boys, uh, happily married, seems well adjusted. He's not just a simple person. He's, he's highly intelligent. And the way he approaches all of his stuff is highly intelligent as well. Um, but there's this other person. So that's like one, one side, right? Outdoorsman, uh, you know, father. There's another side of this, which is a younger demographic almost. Um, and I found this guy, uh, Tony Polcari, or Anthony Polcari. And he is... Uh, a single dude living in a, I think he lives in Washington, D.C. He's urban-based. 
He's a single guy, uh, and he sort of catalogs his life. This is through Instagram instead of YouTube, like um, Luke Stevens. But he is sort of showing men of his age how they can live and and not just be a big lunkhead, I guess, basically. Uh, what's funny is I did a little survey to a bunch of my uh, bunch of my peers, uh, other men that I know, and I sent it to some some women as well. What they thought, of, like with no no subtext or anything, what they thought of his videos, and it generally fell along this line of pretty much anybody who is an early Gen Xer, you know, like mine, my age group, I guess, and and up, were really confused. <laughs> They were just like, what is this guy doing? Um, and, and and honestly, some thought that he was, uh, well, we, we won't go there, but uh, they were just confused. And then everyone from like that demographic younger were sort of like, oh, this is refreshing. This isn't just another, um, you know, what, what's the term we want to use? Like red pill, uh, masculine, overly masculine. Um, thing you know this guy's talking about the clothes he wears and the food he makes and going on dates and and how to be a, a chivalrous man and stuff like that uh it's kind of refreshing to i i think it's kind of refreshing for for those younger that younger demographic to see someone leading the way like that now he's pushing this i don't want to say pushing it but he's he's it's called vibrant masculinity and i, and I found it um I found it interesting that it's being like, you know, termed and and given a given a thing. So this this link inside hook, I'll I'll try to link it up so you can go read it. Um, it's very interesting. Um, so let's talk about the the Tony P philosophy. Vibrant masculinity means it's okay to be assertive, to go after your dreams, to want a leadership role, but at the same time to also know when it's time to sit back, listen. Let someone else take the lead as well. It also means we can hang out with friends, joke around, be sarcastic. We can still lift each other up, give them a hug, have those intimate conversations and build those bonds that last, last a lifetime as well. I, it took me a long time to learn those things, you know, and, and I want to commend this young, this gentleman for sort of being there at such a young age. He, he's quite wise. I mean, it took me almost 50 almost 50 years to get to the point where I'm okay with those things. Um, so here's a note, and, and I found this guy through Arnold Schwarzenegger's email newsletter, who he has, he has like ghostwriter um, write it, but they wrote, real masculinity is confidence, it's strength, it's nurturing, it's positive. It isn't some puffed up showboating thing you must prove every second of every day. The manliest guys will never tell you how masculine they are. That's so true. Uh, and I like this term vibrant masculinity, and I like both of those. And I, I think there's a lot to take away from that in how you um, present yourself in front of others. I want to keep going with some other people that I look to in, in my life. Um, or this sort of masculine archetype almost. Um, here's a person, I don't know if I don't know if you've discovered him yet, uh, Andrew Huberman. He has a, I mean, his podcast is is incredible. He's, he's, he's on all the podcast channels as well as YouTube. I like watching him on YouTube. Um, he's, he's been all over the place and I, they just came out with some top podcast listings or whatever, you know, uh, he's like in the top 10, I believe if I'm not wrong, but uh, some great conversations. They can be kind of drawn out um, in that, you know, they're like two or three hours long, but but he's he's a he's an ex-skateboarder, so he has that mindset, but he's also very intelligent. Um, he's a PhD neuroscientist and tenured professor, Department of Neurobiology at Stanford School of Medicine. Um, you know, so the guy's a, essentially a brain surgeon or a brain, a brain scientist. Um, and the way he talks about things, the way he approaches things is from a very masculine, mature angle, yet he's also very empathetic and 
responsive to other people. And, and I think you can do both. And I think that's the mark of a true masculine gentleman. Now, this video I'm playing here uh, is with the next person I wanted to bring up is uh, Cameron uh, Cam Haynes. And uh, I've done a, I think I did a show on his book. If not, I'll look it up and we need to do one. But he's a uh, renowned bow hunter, endurance athlete. Uh, he's right in our, my, uh, you know, years as far as he's a, he's a maybe a season or two ahead of me um maybe 10 years older i'm not quite sure but he's an incredible athlete um inter and an incredible hunter until he runs like you know ultras like 100 mile races and stuff like that and he's significantly changed the way people think of um outdoorsmen and hunting activists i mean uh athletes so you should definitely check him out this video is a part of his podcast catalog where it's him and andrew huberman together doing some things and you know they they like to go and, and work out and stuff and there's some particularly um trying moments in the video where you know huberman is is dying carrying this rock up a hill and he he refuses to sit it down because he's challenged himself and he sees through the challenge. And that's part of that integrity thing that I, I think our forefathers really held on to that. I think a lot of us are lacking in a sense of needing to build resilience. Well, this is how you build resilience. You know, this, this moment here, there's no reason for him to really do it. He could have sat that rock down at any time, but he made a promise to himself and those that he was working out with that he wouldn't, and then he didn't, even though he really wanted to. And that's how you build mental strength. And that's how you build resilience. And he pulled it off. Now, Cam Haynes has a great podcast series as well. My favorite part is actually the lift, run, shoot aspect, which is the little mini episodes, which is the activities they do before and after the podcast together. Uh, it's just pretty fun. So those are some people that and let's take a look here this is uh from cameron haynes website these are his uh values that he's put out there hard work discipline authenticity honesty recognizing god he's got his you know his religious aspect or spirituality aspect which i think is is strong as well and it's totally okay to embrace those things as a as a masculine individual everybody knows david goggins i think I run hot and cold with Mr. Goggins. I don't think that what we see in videos and social media is really the real David Goggins. I think it's really his, his personification of what he wants you to see and experience. But he's also a very real person. And one of the things that I think we struggle with is, conf is confrontation. Uh, and it's part of that having integrity and having that mental strength to be able to have hard conversations. And, and I don't mean confrontations like, um, you know, fights <laughs> or self-defense. I mean, in terms of just having those hard conversations, I, I know many people that would just rather avoid those altogether. And he is does not strike me as one that would ever skip out on those hard conversations. So I want to play this. With him, and I don't know what event what event this is or whatever, but he's speaking to someone in the crowd, and I think that it's worth going through. Uh, thanks so much for being here. Um, I I'm just a 26 year old kid. I don't know what I'm doing in life. I don't know where I'm going. So my question to you is, what advice do you have for someone like that, and also someone who? Yeah, slow that shit down, man. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, bring it. I'm nervous. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Don't be nervous, man. Fuck these people. You good? <laughs> Don't be okay. nervous. That's exactly how motherfuckers fail. They walk in the room, and they ain't making no money that way. They ain't doing shit. If I heard shit you said, now say that motherfucker, stick your chest out. Say that shit. Slow. Okay. Hello, Mr. Goggins. That is a hard lesson to receive. I've received that before in the past from, from my father, actually. Uh, I had an instance where I had to ask him to borrow i had to borrow money from him and i was very nervous and um was not really prepared and, and 
you know, he received it really well. And he was like, well, how much do you need? And I, I said, I don't know, you know, maybe this much, maybe that much. And he stopped me and he said, hey, listen, son, if you're if you're going to go ask someone, if you're going to go ask a man to borrow money, you need to know exactly how much you need and when you'll be paying it back. You need to communicate that and you need to be confident about it. And that was a hard lesson for me to receive at the time because I was younger. I was like in my early 20s. But this is the type of lesson that a, a, a very well-informed, well-matured, masculine individual can communicate to someone who might not be. How are you doing? Ah! <laughs> Thanks so much for being here. And um, my name is Mihal. Nice it's, to meet you. it's an honor to meet you. And um, so I'm just starting out in life. I don't know what I'm, where I'm going, what I'm doing. But also one problem, a major problem that I think I have is forming discipline, staying disciplined in life. Do you hear everything you just said? Hmm. Yes. How old are you? Uh, 26. And you don't know? Where I'm going, what I'm doing, and I'm not disciplined. So how the fuck am I supposed to help you? That 100% makes me remember that moment with my father where I was asking for help, but I had not stopped to consider myself. I was only thinking about protecting myself. I wasn't thinking about our interaction or what he brings to the table. How? You got to sit. All this shit I talk about, man, that's what I talk about. There's a lot of motherfuckers that even came here and talked to you all today. I'm a fucking smoke jumper to keep knowledge coming. You don't ever walk up anywhere in fucking life at 26 or at 16 not have an idea what the fuck you want to do with your life. You're not gonna find it through coming to these fucking conventions. You're not gonna find it in a fucking book. You've got to sit down like I had to do around your age and think about what the fuck do you want to be what do you want to do? How does that look like? Because how the fuck you can have discipline when you don't know where to put that shit? Right. That makes sense? Yes. You ain't gonna have no fucking discipline. You're like, I don't know what I want to do. So when you just wake up and just arbitrary fucking just wake the fuck up and just start getting after it? No. You gotta have shit in order. Plans, goals, destinies, journeys. And then all that shit falls in the fuck. Every question you ask me will fall right the fucking place. Once you fucking figure out first at 26. So why the fuck are you here? Mm. What a great lesson he has there. I don't think that you necessarily have to have everything figured out. But you should definitely have done some work. Internal work, some self-reflection, building some self-awareness to get you to the point where you can actually have those conversations with people who have been through it because the people who have been through it can see where you are almost immediately just because they've been through it let's think about rekindling these old school virtues into modern living and this isn't just for men i, I think anyone can embrace these things but i think it is particularly um, in modern men and men coming up i think about my own sons and the things that I work on with them, I think that there's a lot of people just lacking these things. And so I want to go through my thoughts on these. Just like we saw through David Goggins' conversation with that young man, embracing mindfulness and presence is something we have to do as, as masculine individuals. Because it's not, it's like Arnold's, Arnold said in his newsletter, it's not just about chest thumping and proving yourself. It's about being present and listening and then sharing yourself in terms of the things that you've been through or just being there and listening for other people, being there present for other people. Well, so through whether that's through meditation or simply working to be present in activities, cultivating your awareness of those around you and your surroundings really enhances the quality of everything, your relationships and your well-being. And, and I use meditation a lot. And I don't necessarily mean you, you know, you sit there and ooh and, and bang a little thing. Meditation can simply be reading, learning, spending time with with others. I mean, it can be all of those things. Um, 
but being present. I, I work with uh, a person a lot and I know that they're not really there because there are sometimes when I can tell they're not actively paying attention to the things we're discussing, even when they're discussing things, they're looking at their phone or I know that they're thinking about the next thing that's on their list to do when they're not present, taking care of the thing that's in front of them. So how can you, like, like Goggins said, how can you even receive any lessons or do anything if you're not doing that? And I think that is just a beautiful thing that gives you such confidence. So how do you do this? I like to do something. I like to think a lot. I get to do this instead of I have to do this, right? I get to come into this job and sit at this desk and build websites, or I get to go and teach other people this martial art instead of I have to do this. The moment I get into that I have to mindset, I've lost. So I try to use that a lot. I get to go pick up my kid from school instead of I have to go pick him up. Because if you live in that I have to world, you know, you don't pick your kid up from school forever. Eventually you don't do that anymore because they drive themselves or they're not in school anymore. And that moment is lost in your life. Another one is a, a stoic uh, thought experiment where memento mori, you could leave this world today. I think Memento Mori translates to remember you must die. But you could leave this world today. So if I actually have a, a coin that I carry sometimes that says Memento Mori on it. And I think about that sometimes when, with my interactions with people. This might be the last interaction with this person I have. So I shouldn't have things floating out there uh, weird or unsaid or whatever. And that, that's a that's a strong thing to do, but I, I think that is a particularly masculine thing to do um, in terms of leaving others knowing the, the, the what your relationship is. Uh, put down the phone and be there. That's super important to me. It drives me nuts. Um, and, I, and I sort of get mad at myself sometimes when I catch myself doing that, but I, I try to catch myself doing that. And then working on self-awareness, journaling. Uh, spending time with like-minded individuals talking about these things. And then even therapy. I mean, don't be ashamed of therapy. Everyone should probably have some therapy happening. I think that ultimately will make, make you a much more masculine uh, personality because you'll have confidence in the things that you might be confused over. And therapy is not necessarily something that you you go get when things are falling apart. I mean, you should practice these things when things are not falling apart. I mean, often we get to this point where things aren't working and then we seek help. And that's good too. You always should do that, but you kind of need to start when things are going well as well. Another one, uh, these, these uh, old school virtues is prioritizing face-to-face -face connections. We don't do that nearly as much anymore. It's all texting and emails and, and phone calls and stuff. I think spending time with friends and family or building teamwork, camaraderie, you know, training together, whatever it is, really strengthens those personal relationships and your ability to exist in the world. Uh, something I like to do, never eating alone. I try not, I mean, I do that probably more than I should because I'm I'm always here working and doing things, but try not to eat alone. I, I don't eat alone as much as I can. And then I try to get lunch or have conversations with mentors. Okay. And then I also, I try to cultivate relationships with others where we actually have discussion about things. Um, I know that sounds tiring. You don't have to do it all the time, but, but having a relationship with another human being where you are comfortable having discussions about whatever it's a, it's a it's a very confident play i think setting and upholding personal standards defining them and then committing to upholding them whether it's professional conduct or personal relationships but having a clear set of values provides you that 
foundation for making your way through just how absolutely complex and shitty life is. You don't have to have them all like written out like a to-do list, but you should know, you know, where you come from and what you stand for. I think I don't want to, I'm going to toot my own horn. It's my podcast. I can do it. Um, but I, I, I really want to, this year in particular was one of the things I set out to do. I want to live up to the standard of not talking shit about others. And I've already failed a couple of times, but I'm, you know, but I'm trying not to. The other day I ran into this person that I used to know. Um, I, I mean, I still know them. They're, they're still out there, but I used to see them like almost every day because I coach them. And he was asking me uh, some, some lightly, I will, I'll say lightly intrusive questions about another person kind of asking about their business. And instead of just continuing the conversation and, and giving him the answers he was seeking, I just said, well, you'll have to ask them if you want to know that stuff. And it, it, I mean, it kind of cut the conversation off, but, and it felt a bit rough in the moment. But what I know now, after having a few days to reflect on it, the fact that that's what shut that conversation down kind of was that that's all that that person wanted from me was that Intel and that it, this person's really not my friend. Not really. And I'm okay with that now because I'll probably never have another interaction with that person. So why the hell do I give a, give a rat's ass about anything else than that? What I would have done is betrayed the actual uh, integrity of my relationship with the other person that he was asking me questions about had I given him their business or told him about their business. So that's, that's in, that's an example. Now I've, I've failed as well. I don't want to just be completely tuning my own horn, but that was one where I didn't. Another, what I deem as a, a masculine trait is continuous self-improvement or the commitment to continuous self-improvement. Adopting a mindset of continuous self-improvement, much like the samurai's commitment to lifelong learning, the modern, modern man can pursue uh, personal and professional development, embracing learning, skills, interpersonal development. How do we do this? You have to make time to read, write in a journal, do self-awareness, self-analyze yourself. You can do that by journaling. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be overcomplicated. It can be simple. And it should. And you should read. You should learn. Another thing I do is is how I use social media. I try very, very, very hard not to just mindlessly scroll or doom scroll. I try to find things that I can learn from that I will either go back and read later or I will actually journal. I would use as a journal prompt. I think you can do that. That keeps you just from looking at, you know, butts and bikinis all the time. You can actually find some things that are useful in there. Practicing kindness. We don't often put kindness and masculinity together. They, they go together, I think. It doesn't have to be big things. Mostly, you can just do and say nice little things to people and genuinely practice not having expectations from the person after you do it. So pay someone a compliment publicly, bring them coffee, you know, whatever it is, but don't expect reciprocity. You're practicing the art of giving that. And I remember my wife's father was a Korean war Vietnam veteran lifelong army man, lifelong other career as well, raised a really great family. And he would do that. He would remember, he would notice something you liked, remembered it, and then always either brought it up in conversation or had some of it for you. Like in, in the sense of like, you know, if he knew you liked a certain type of snack when you went over there, he had that snack. Um, and that's a, such a small thing, but it it's also this like 
almost very fatherly. Like if you had, if you grew up with a loving father, um, it's almost like a very fatherly way of saying, I love you, you know, whereas saying those words oftentimes are, are kind of hard for a lot of people, but it's a way to do that. And, you know, to receive that is also uh, something interesting too. Uh, I want to get into the next part here in a second. You'll notice I'm playing um, this video here. It's, it's playing like samurai quotes and, and things like that because I want to I want to talk through some of that as well. This idea of old school, if we go back really old school to something that I've studied a lot, the samurai bushido code. We can we can borrow some of that. And Bushido values, it's a profound way to see the world from a very well informed, very very balanced masculine outlook. It's complex. The Japanese during the time of the samurai were uh were very complex. They were it was, it was contemporary, even though it was, you know. So many hundreds of years ago, they were also mindful and they were committed in, in so many ways. And that's why the legacy is so strong. And that legacy of strength, honor and meaningful connections is so strong. Even hundreds of years later, we're still studying it. So I think it's worthy of digging into. Let's look at some of these things. OK, so there are uh five there's there's five um and you know they can be they can be memorized and, and i think you should but let's look at these things so rectitude uh upholding integrity in modern life would be one way of looking at how we sort of interpret that so the samurai valued this this rec rectitude by emphasizing the importance of their moral integrity. I think modern men can incorporate this value by staying true to their principles. And we've talked about this, whether personal, professional relationships or, or projects, upholding that moral integrity all at all times, like, like the example of, you know, not talking about someone behind their back or being that person that's like, we really shouldn't do that. And I'm not talking about being a goody two shoes. Um, I don't think the samurai were goody two shoes. I mean, they're known to to party and and do all kinds of stuff. They would also murder the crap out of you. But um, having that moral integrity to not cross those lines, and not only to just do that, but to do it to the point where other people know they know you won't cross that line, and you become that person that everyone looks up to and relies on because of that. Courage is another one of the Bushido values. Facing modern challenges boldly is one way to, to write that. Um, it's fundamental in today's challenges. Modern, we can draw inspiration from samurai's courage in the way that they would fight to the death, right? The way they would embrace challenges, the risks they took facing those things with resilience and bravery okay not being a sniveling worry wart about absolutely everything and i'll tell you a story here i just had a conversation with someone about some of this stuff they were talking about a problem they were having um in their in the business they own with their with their partner and they were worried their partner was doing something wrong and they were like, but you know, his partner has got a new, they've got a family and they got all this stuff going on. And you know, maybe that's the reason. And, and I just remember thinking that's all good, but like you've got business and then you've got personal family stuff. And that person is mixing those things in the sense of almost hurting you with some, some mistakes and decisions that they're making. And remembering that that person is making those decisions. And we have business on one side and we have personal life on the other side. And their expectation is that you're not going to bring in your personal life into the business, Then, but they are. 
And you have to face that with the right amount of courage to not be afraid to have that conversation. And I, th I think what I said was like, you know, if you want to deal with the business side, deal with that. And then later have a, hey man, are you okay? Let's sit down and you know, find out what's going on in your life. That person probably has some stuff going on, but, but you've got to be able to have those conversations. And I think we talk about modern issues. That's really what it is. It's not, you know, the samurai face, we think of courage, you know, they draw their sword and they go into war. That's one, that's one level. But I think it starts way earlier with my long-winded explanation of having this, having a hard conversation with someone. I think it starts there. Because if you're there and you're afraid to have that hard conversation, listen, I am too most of the time. But if, if you're afraid to have it, if you're afraid to, uh, when called upon to give your opinion, give your honest opinion, if you're afraid to do that, then how could you ever expect to pick up the sword and defend your your family or your country when you need to, right? They go hand in hand. It's just something to think about. Benevolence is another one. Nurturing meaningful relationships. And okay, we've talked about this too. I can't underscore enough the importance of having compassion and empathy in others. Working to build deeper, more longer lasting friendships aligns with this. We, as modern men, we can prioritize meaningful connections, offering our support and working to understand where everyone is at around us. We can do that. The trick of that is, is also by doing that, we learn a lot about ourselves. But I was, as another conversation I was having with a, with a new student of mine, he was saying that uh, he's, he's made a life change in jobs or whatever. And he's one of the things he's done is he started reading a book. I think like he reads as many as he can. I, I don't think it's daily, but maybe he's reading that fast. I don't know, but He's let's say, let's just say he's reading a book a week and he's done like, you know, 30 or 40 books so far. And he just was telling me that the, the lessons he's gotten from doing that, from, from ingesting the books and learning and everything, he can see conversations that he has with others for what they are. And he can see where that person is with the things they're saying a lot clearer now that he's done all this work on himself through, through reading these books and that's such a beautiful thing. And that's a that's sort of a trick to this is that by having um, compassion, empathy, and trying to understand others, we really do learn more about ourselves. And that's that self-awareness work that we need to be doing. You can do it by externalizing. I will tell you in my martial arts journey, I don't really think I got good at the, the things in the martial arts that I'm good at, which is, which is not many, but... I don't think I really got good at those things until I started teaching others those things. I could do them. I could do them well. But when I started teaching other people those things, the, the level of understanding that I had to develop is so deep. And it was just so awesome to know that through helping others, I was bettering myself. So I was sort of doing both at the same time. And it kind of excites me about it. I don't think that's selfish. I think it's just a fringe benefit. Okay, another one here, respect. If we want to apply this to the modern world, balancing technology and presence is a great way to break this down. This Bushido value of rei, R-E-I, respect, in, in Japanese also means to bow. In karate, we have a set of guiding principles much like bushido code but the number one is do not forget that karate do begins and ends with rei begins and ends with bowing literally and it begins and ends with respect so i think when it comes to technology professionalism listening helping being present respecting other people's time 
that's one way to literally build strong connection. It builds that high regard for others. The benevolence, which we just talked about. It's, it's just having that empathy for other people to respect their time and effort and what they're doing, I think is very huge. And that's the thing about a samurai. They're very politely cut your head off, right? They're being very polite, but they're murdering you straight up, decapitating you. You know what I mean? So it doesn't mean you're a pushover. <laughs> it doesn't mean you won't defend yourself. It doesn't mean you won't argue or or do whatever actions need to be done, but it just means that we'll do the things we need to do to make sure we're providing that respect. That's a very strong move. All right, the last one here, honor. Cultivating personal integrity. Synonymous honor and personal integrity, I think. A modern man can uphold this Bushido value by being true to yourself adhering to your standards, making decisions aligned with these principles, doing that, working on that personal integrity at all times, really builds a sense of honor in you, in your day-to-day -day life. And I, I can't tell you the level of confidence that builds for you. It's just out of this world. It's a fundamental thing, a fundamental masculine thing to carry honor. Uh, and I want to I want to close by explaining that I'm not I'm using the term masculine and man and stuff. It, it's it's not to the to be the antithesis of what's not masculine or, with feminine or. Uh, female, not man. That's not the point. You you can be a female. You can be a woman or identify that way and have masculine traits and have these traits. If we look at this, the classic yin and yang thing, that's just where they fall. You know, it's one or the other. It doesn't mean that, you know, one is less than the other or one is more than the other. That's not what we're talking about at all. So I hope this can help you. I hope this can start a conversation or start you on a path of self um, awareness slash discovery. That would be great. If, if I reached one person, it would be great. Um, remember we're here anytime you can reach out through the website. I hope you come back for more. There's a ton of stuff here. Um, yeah. So, Thank you for your time. I know you could spend it anywhere else on the internet and you spend it here. I'm eternally grateful for that. And until next time, practice.